Over here. Thank you. That piece has to reach this side, I believe. And John, I found everything you had except slaughter. Didn't find slaughter. We actually don't have a printed copy. We have the original manuscript. No, 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 no. We have a printed copy. Well, it's, right. it's somewhere. I, I believe. <laughs> it's somewhere. Yeah, okay. Well, that's lovely. I brought down twins up. All right. meeting and the main job of this meeting is to turn each one of you into further research person for it. Um, we need your help. There is a ton of information out in the community, in your great aunt's attic, or in the newspapers, or in other ways. And I'm going to ask that we have a sort of quarterly meeting of those interested in history so that we can, can hear what's going on and add to it. There's a tremendous amount we already know, and of course that's, that's marvelous, and there is more to come. And I have asked two of the people who are working with the What We Know and More to Come department to open us with a few words. One is the man who is also Mr. Camera back Mr. there. Mr. Camera guy. Trip Wiggins. Trip is the archivist of St. George's Church. I'm glad to say that in the renovation that went on in this area a few years ago, largely directed by Earl Boffman, behind you, bless his heart, that a separate archives room was created and that has good shelves and good stuff. And it has Tripp, who is continuing to organize and list and all of that. And uh, uh, Tripp has brought, I hope, a couple of interesting things for us. Yes. And on behalf of the archives, the one thing I'd like to tell everybody is I kind of got into this by doing a survey of the cemetery, because there wasn't a really good survey of the cemetery done. I did that about eight or nine years ago. And I'm still, to this day, looking to find out where the graves were before we built McGuire Hall. Because they were all back here, and I cannot find a picture in this church of the grave <coughs> before McGuire Hall was built. I know there's some under the building, too, because I know several of the people that are under here, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hard to get to their relationship. The ones that were under here are probably going to do well on the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I'm looking for is, we have in the archives, we have all the official records of the church. We've got lots of official kind of stuff, you know, how much we spent on this and who the records were and who the members of the various committees were. But we don't have much on stories, people-to-people -people interactions. And we don't have that many pictures. We have a bunch of pictures, but um, we could always use more. We could probably some of the ministry would more pictures. Um, but what I have done in the last year or so is uh, thanks to Barbara and everybody that had worked in, with AIM. When we did AIM 2000, they took all the stuff in archives and they trundled them over, and Barry McGee and a lot of other people helped out, I think, also. But they boxed them all up in boxes and they put little inventories on each box. So I've taken all those inventories and put them into an index, so now we can figure out where all this stuff is. So if you're ever looking for anything, we have an index. Well, we found some stuff for John earlier this year when he was looking for stuff for the name renovation. Um, and the other thing, let's see, we're in the process, and I have been for a couple of years now, putting all our parish records, births, deaths, marriages, confirmations, all that kind of stuff. I've been slowly putting them into spreadsheets, printing them off and giving them to the library, and also putting them online so genealogists around the world can find their lost loved ones who are someplace. We have one major problem with our records at St. George's is that we have absolutely no records of any births, marriages, records, burials, blah, before 1858. And the reason for that, we'll probably mention, is our, one of our vestry members who really was thinking ahead as the war came to Fredericksburg in 61, 62, 
He bundled up all the records. Now, the vestry records, somebody just took home and left in their house for the war. But the official church records, somebody took to Richmond for safekeeping. Okay. And on April 2nd, 1865, Richmond sort of burned. So those records are all gone. Um, the last few things I want to leave you with is, contrary to popular opinion and legend of this local area, Underneath the front steps, Fielding Lewis is not buried. Oh, oh. He's actually buried at his, at his son's home in Frederick County, although there's no marker of it, but he's really there. It is. Trust me. And if you like Fielding Lewis, because he was a he was a member of the vestry of the church for about 30 years, and uh, he was a senior warden and kind of shaped the church in a lot of ways back in the mid 1700s. Next weekend, i got to put in a free plug here, is the Welsh Festival right in front of John's Little Museum a block away here. And we are honoring, exactly. we always honor a, a Welshman each year. And this year we're honoring Fielding Lewis. And who is playing Fielding Lewis, sir? Uh, a very close friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so come on over to Trail will be Fielding Lewis yeah. on next Saturday. Uh, and we do have the, uh, the photocopies of the original vestry records. We have the vestry records back to 1726, all the way up to today. Uh, the original originals, I think, are held by the uh, University of Virginia. But we have a, a copy on there. And we also have, there was a wonderful, nice gentleman, John Dorman, who transcribed our first hundred years of vestry records. Because the handwriting back then is really hard. Unless you read it all the time, you can't read it all. So he transcribed the whole thing. And we have this in the library in our library in there. See, and, it's and then what is a little book? book again. The little book is uh, a parishioner of ours wrote this back in 1950 or so. Carol Quenzel, professor of history at your little school up, this, up the hill there. And it's called this a History of St. George's. So it covers the earliest days up to the time when Tom Faulkner showed up. And I understand Mary has just... We're going to hear more about that in a minute. And then the, in a minute. So that's my 30 seconds. So I'll Thank you, Sarah. First of all, again, profound thanks to Tripp for what he has been doing. <laughs> behind the scenes, and he gets in touch. We were having an EFM meeting here one Monday, and he said, John, you might want to meet this gentleman. And this gentleman turned out to be an organ historian and he was working with Tripp in the records because our 1875 organ was one of the great organs in America. It, alas, disappeared in ways that are uh, that happen with old churches, but that's another little piece of the serendipity of someone as active. Trace Seaver, pardon me. I know where that organ is. You do? It's down at uh, Little Port, Port Church in Nadal. Come on. Marilyn, you've been hiding that. <laughs> you never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially expressing my contrition. <laughs> and I'm asking what you know that I don't know or we don't know. Golly, that's marvelous. I didn't know that at all, Mary. Take a field trip. To well, absolutely. Hear, hear, hear one sound if these walls could play music. Mm. Trace. Uh, my name is Trace Siever, and the Vestry has asked that I look into reproducing these three volumes that Mary Faulkner, why Tom Faulkner, has given it to the, right there on the wall. Give it to the parish. She she compiled from her husband's uh, notes about some of his earliest years here, probably the first ten years he was here. It was thirty or thirty-five pages of that in the front, of the first volume, and then the first uh, fifteen years of the St. Georgian newsletter into these three volumes. So she's Probably given one period. She said uh, the title is Faulkner Years 1946 to 1976. Uh, again, Tom Faulkner's memoir really only dates for about the first maybe maybe the end of it trails off at about 1960, but it gets sparse at the end. So I had the privilege of reading some of this stuff. She's given us three copies of this of the five that she made. I think she sent one to the library in town and one down to the diocesan archive. Um, so we'll have three copies of it in the library. My project is to find out
how many people would be interested in owning. I prefer to print it slightly differently than what we have printed here. If I were going to buy a copy of it, I don't like the spiral bound things. So I'd like to get a list from this group as a hobbyist interest group of people who would be interested in owning copies of this. Um, we're, we'll only print on demand. We, we won't have money ahead to to print. And it's probably the, the costing I found on this was that uh, if we could get about 50 people who are interested, um, we could probably do this for about $40 a piece. And I mean, just hand out. The price goes up if the number of people go down because the, it's not worth people's, it's hard to get the, the setup costs. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for all the setup costs for small ones. Interested in Mary Faulkner's book. About forty trays. Yeah, forty dollars. If we actually can can come up with, I mean, it, the the sort of cost is two thousand dollars essentially to get a print run of print run of fifty put together. All right. Um, the, the, if we had more than fifty people, then the additional cost would not be as much as forty dollars. Okay. Well, I'm putting my name on there, and we'll ask if anybody's interested to sign up, and we'll ask other people. Also. Grace, I just want to say thank you so much for what you're doing with that. Now, do we have that in electronic uh, We What we have is the camera ready versions from Mary. Some of this, a lot of this is in the actual original, I should have shown some of this, is the actual photostat of the St. Oh, George. Oh, the St. George. Mm -hmm. The wow. first, again, that first some pages of it is actually TypeScript. Uh, so it would be relatively straightforward to transcribe. Uh, St. George and I don't imagine. I mean, that would be a monumental task for St. George. Okay. Thank you, sir. Let me say that related to that is another project that Mary has suggested, um, and that is that we do some more oral history, especially with some of our older folks. And I was so sorry to learn of Betty Stevens' illness. I hope she's going to return to full bloom at any minute. Because she was one of the leaders with Mary in talking about that. And one of the things I hope some of you will do is consider working with Mary and Betty and others of us to do some oral history. Uh, I know that each of us in this room will live forever, but some of our <laughs> friends will go on and we need to record them before we lose them. And so uh, I hope the people who are interested in that will speak to me or to Trace and in, indirectly then to Mary. Well, I'm delighted to be able to share some things about these walls and earlier walls.